Honest podcast. Brothers from the middle of the neighborhood of Gary, Indiana, coming to you. Talk about this thing called life. No matter what we do or where it goes, we're going to always be forthright, vulnerable, and honest. Josh, call off. Adam. <laughs> Double A. <laughs> Marcus. So, we coming to you this week, uh, fellas. How y'all doing? How's the week treating you? Pretty well, pretty man. Good. A lot of work. Pretty good. Same here, man. I'm doing pretty good. I got a. Uh, I'm in the midst of a move, so by the, by this time next week, I'll be all moved into the uh, new place. So, you know, up, making okay. some moves, making Dang. some changes around here. Hey, congratulations on the new abode, on new residence. Appreciate it. Unfortunately, sure. I won't have this beautiful backdrop anymore. You know, it's all good. I'm sure. I'm sure you you'll figure something out. <laughs> yeah, just get a whiteboard and like draw it. Or just take a, just take a picture of it and make it your virtual background. This is true. This is true. <laughs> the uh, tricks of the trade, the tricks of this old thing we've been doing for two and a half years that I probably should have known. Right. Technology, but, uh, not bad on this end. Um, uh, I recently found out. So uh, I, I had a potential job mm-hmm. that I was that I was kind of hoping for because the money was going to be dumb. Uh, but then I didn't uh, I don't qualify because the nigga don't have a B.A. And that shit broke my fucking heart because I know I am overqualified <laughs> for that job. Yeah, that's silly to me. Like, it, very. If, like, if you know your stuff. Like unless you're trying to be a doctor, you know. Okay, sure. Sure. Let me show you see those certifications. That's fine. But like, I don't know. That's crazy. I'm like <laughs> teaching dancer, teaching dance to dancers that probably aren't even going to pursue dance, but want to learn about it in yes. a more like professional way. Again, I'm overqualified for this job, but you're telling me because I don't have a because I don't have I didn't put myself in debt to get that. <laughs> Basically, that I'm not qualified. So potentially. Somebody who never taught is probably going to end up teaching them. Maybe you That's taught it. you taught dance for a long time. I've been teaching dance for and performing like on professional six, seven, stages, yes. <laughs> like around the fifteen world. years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's crazy to me. Over fifteen. Yo, this, this is what the fuck he does <laughs> in, in the world currently. And it, uh, so they pretty much told me, like, you know, we can bring you in for workshops. You can even come in and maybe do some choreography, but we can't hire you for staff because we have a strict, they must have a BA policy. And I was like, so you just said, like, you can bring me in for smaller things, but you ain't going to pay me that goddamn real rate. And That's yeah, BS. that, that shit, that, that really took me out. So, yeah. uh, we're looking for, I'm looking for some solutions to that. Uh, of course, it's probably going to still equate to me going to get, my degree at some point, which I knew I was going to do eventually, but trying to figure out a way to circumvent the system. So I ain't stuck in school or in (laughs) more major debt. I already owe the mafia too much. Uh, (laughs) So, yeah. Well, sorry to hear that, man. I know. I mean, I I know you have your, I know you pretty pretty much just said you already have a plan around it. Um, but working still, on a plan. I ain't got yeah, a plan. I ain't got well, a plan. Yeah, you're working on it. So uh, yeah, you're you're working on it. I mean, you know, you're moving in the right direction. Yeah. It's just uh fucking crazy to hear, man. You know, otherwise, shit, it was, but... it was, otherwise it was a good week though. It was a good week. I got a uh my my program down at Purdue last few years. We've only had about eight, nine students, and this semester we got 21. <laughs> oh dope. Is that just more word of mouth? Is that just better marketing? I think one okay. of my students in particular did some heavy recruiting. A couple of them brought in a friend or two, but one of them went to some like freshman convention thing because she's about to graduate and brought in a gaggle of niggas that. <laughs> uh, yeah, what is the proper term for a group of you? <laughs> gaggle? <laughs> oh, just, it took a while. I'm there, though. I'm there. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I was, and so we had a great first, we had a great Amazing. first day uh on Thursday. <laughs> um it was it was a real damn good first day. Got I got my first like bushel of they thems. 
and <laughs> they 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 came to work. All the days came All to work. Niggas. <laughs> 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 and I was like, yo, this is fucking fantastic. And so I, I, I let them know. I was like, I'm really enthralled with this because one, we ain't had them kind of numbers since early 2010s. And Dang. uh and yeah, they they came, they came in. We 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 worked up a good sweat. I was like, okay. Now <laughs> hey, you got Spanish. some. You got some good news to balance the otherwise could be considered I, bad news. Yeah, no, that's cool. I, I try, silver's my favorite color. I try to walk in the gray. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> more power black, to you, dog. Black I is can't actually fuck my favorite color. I was about to say gray is just, I can't fuck with gray for, for like the long haul. I can't just stick with it <laughs> for the long haul. <laughs> it's cool. let's, uh, let's hop into this subject. Yeah, I like gray. Uh, we got a couple for y'all. First, um, I don't know if you watch Abbott Elementary. Uh, audience. If you don't, you should. If you do, good job. Shout out to Quincy Brownson, fine ass. Shout out to Shirley Rouse, finer ass. Ooh. And uh, uh, all the all dope people on there um, that just won Emmys and uh, getting, you know, uh, Golden Globes, I think is what just happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That won Golden Globes and Emmys was a little bit before that. But yeah, so this thing happened in the last episode, uh, or last episode I watched anyway, where, uh, spoiler alert, in case you ain't watched two episodes ago, um, Tyler James Henry and Quinta Brunson, wait, that's his name, right? <coughs> Everybody hates Chris, ain't that his real name? I think so. I think so. Tyler James Williams. Right? Yes. Williams, Wait, my bad. Wait, there we go. I, I mix him up with a uh, Brian Tyree Henry from Atlanta. Uh, oh, that, yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tyler James Williams and Quentin Brunson had like this unspoken crush on each other, uh, and then neither of them has made a pass when they had the chance. Now Quinta is going on a date with Ty, uh, with Tyler's friend, who's being played by Vic Mensa. I don't remember his uh his character's name. Uh. And not Vic Mensa, Vince Staples. Jesus, I'm fucking up everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, because he's an actor too. So, like, okay, that's a whole other person. <laughs> so that's a very one. <laughs> with with Vince Staples, and uh, when Tyler found out, he gave her a heads up that you know Vince might be might not really work, but you know, just keep your head on the swivel. And she hit him with the with what some people are considering a bar. Mm -hmm. If you need to give me a heads up, how is he your friend? Mm. See, I I I looked at it. All right, yeah, I'm good to jump no, in. No, no, please, right. please, go ahead. <laughs> so at first, like when, when we first when it first came out, like, dang, that's a good point. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm I think, and I haven't seen the show, so maybe. But if I'm just <clears throat> looking at this from a just a human psychological standpoint, mm -hmm. I think the guy is probably just trying to deter her away. Cause like you said before, he has a crush on her. Right. Right. So maybe that's, that's his way of saying like, dang, I didn't make a move, but maybe I can derail this from happening. So maybe I can make one, you know, does that make sense? It does. It does. And I think that, I think that could be that kind of case. And so if we were making a hypothetical in one situation, that could definitely be really certain, uh, not to confine it to what I think these characters are thinking and doing and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, it would help if I knew the character, like, is yeah. this something they would do? Like, I, you know, but if I'm like, some basing this off of just what I know about people. <laughs> yeah. Objectivity. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like with the characters, like Tyler has a girlfriend, he's dating, um, Oh, okay. Well, one of his students' mama, who's fine as shit. Uh, uh, she's on, she's on. She she did a guest cameo on Atlanta too. I don't know if you watched the last season of Atlanta. I didn't. Not yet, at least. I need to though. Yeah, I've been on everything basically. But... <laughs> yeah, I gotta catch up on that. But that seems like the uh, an obvious move for for a teacher. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Aaron Marcus, what are your thoughts on this? I need, man. I, it's, it's funny because I think I, I think I got lost a little bit during the, during the uh, like description. description. Like, so, yeah, so pretty yeah. much, like let's say, let's say you had, let's say you had a friend, like a work friend or something like that, and okay. then I made a pass at them, and you were like, "Hey, 
I just want to give you a heads up, you know, like, be careful with them. Be, be careful with Josh. And then she hit you like, hi to your friend if you got to give me a heads up. Got you. Okay. Now I'm, I'm there. I'm there. Damn. First of all, I have to ask myself, like, damn, why am I doing that to Josh like that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> damn. <laughs> Shit. Uh, I mean, that's a legitimate, qu- that's that's a fair question for sure. Like, why the fuck, like, why is he your homie if you got to warn me about him? But here's the thing. Um, I guess coming at it from a similar um, viewpoint is Adam. Yeah, I think about the different types. Like, you know, there are people who are saying like you have friends for different seasons or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, like, not, like, not everybody you're going to rock with in the same way. Or, like, you wouldn't bring you wouldn't bring everybody to every function or something. You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah, I get that. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of looking at it like that, like, you know. But I guess it's I'm not a, pu- it's you know, not a public situation. function. It's, it's, yeah. that's, your, you that's your, I'm just your thinking friend. about like, hey, I pick up certain friends or different parts of my life, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna suggest it for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's you know true. Yeah. yeah. Everybody you know? not, you know, compatible or whatever. Can I add to my point? <laughs> Yeah, like uh, I'm gonna say this. Like, if I was in that, and if, if I was in that predicament, you got to think about where your where your lo- loyalties lie. So for me, I'm not gonna warn some random person about my even if I think my friend is like, yeah, kind of, you know, mm-hmm. not not boyfriend material, and you know, or sick, whatever, you know, because they like to be all over the place. That's not my responsibility to tell that person that. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut and like, hey, that, you know. <laughs> so that's I'm gonna just say that. <laughs> so you gotta think about where your where your loyal, loyalties lie, because like I'm not gonna go out of my way to derail my friend's opportunity, even if I know he's a douchebag. I'm just like, hey, I'm well, that's none of my business. <laughs> I think it all. No, I think it all come down yeah. to like, how much do you really like her? Yeah. Like, because you may be, for you not to to say that you do. I mean, you're not much better than him. I mean, he maybe he actually about to shoot his shot. I mean, if you're not doing it, then how could you be mad at anybody else? True. Yeah, and I guess it kind of. I guess I kind of think like, hmm, I, like to. In what way is this friend of mine a douchebag? Like, am I? Am I really worried about him hurting you in some way that like you can't come back from? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, come on, you strong, strong, you strong, independent woman. You can come back from me. <laughs> like it's this whole thing of like you, you got this like <laughs> some people really destroying people though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> destroy it. <laughs> I look at it like this. Regardless of my feelings for her. If I think that there's a potential that he might do some bullshit, I'm not going to tell her to keep, I'm not going to tell her to keep her head on the swivel. I'm going to tell him, yo, I really care about this person. Yeah. And, and even if I got to, you know, tell a half truth to be like, it ain't like I'm trying to fuck myself, but <laughs> I, I care about this person. So don't be a dick. Yeah. That's yes, not, no, that's not to that's... bring to, that's not to bring to her. I, yeah, I you're right. I think that's kind of piggybacking off of what Adam was saying. Like your loyalty, like your loyalty lies maybe more with him. Mm-hmm. And therefore it probably makes it easier to have that awkward or difficult conversation with him. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, because y'all rocking. Now here's the other side of this. Because I have this uh growing platonic relationship with her, and now she's going out with my dude. If she brings some stuff about my dude to me. I can speak objectively or like I can speak unbiasedly to go, yo, that's my homie. Here's some, here's some context as to why they may act this way within reason, not just like telling a whole life story <laughs> or, or yeah. also that's a slippery, because, it can be a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. Because she keeps coming just, to you. She keeps now, coming now to you. you like, <laughs> now you become not, part of it. Like, you know what I mean? It depends, it depends on what you, it depends on what you say. Yeah, but she either way she, now she may be um wanting to console to you about him. And that's like, to be clear now, lines. now 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 you guys are talking about that. And so but now, now that's you gotta when be boundaries ready for come that. to play. Yeah, True, that's you're right. That's what boundaries, yeah. 
that's when you that's when you have to, when that time comes that's when you can set a new boundary and be like yo i can't be your confidant because that's my friend yeah. yeah, I would just I would I would just use different names too. Like so, if there was a scenario where there was a guy, his name was a, you know, you know what I'm saying? if he did such and such in a different situation, it has nothing to do with y'all, baby. Don't worry. I'm just saying if he was a guy, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. this is this is what I might say to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, one thing I do know though is if y'all are messing around and let's say y'all are really about your monogamy shit and, and y'all have made some agreements and all of that. And I clearly know my homie is on some bullshit and not honoring the contract that y'all have. I have no issue with being like, yo, you should leave. I think I'm going to go to him first again. And <clears throat> you know, I guess, I guess it all starts with me going to him first and being like, yo, I don't even know if I, I guess, I might even say something like, yo, homegirl is seeming like she's really feeling you. And I'm, and she's the way, she, by the way, she's talking, it seems like you really pumping her head, like with stuff that you really uh -huh. making her think is one way. Are you on that fucking rear again? Come on, man. Now I'm in well, the middle of it. I just want to, you know. I, I feel like uh, we may be talking about two different points in the timeline, though. If it's that early mm -hmm. on, she's like that, absolutely. Let's say y'all been in this for like six months. You, you've said we're exclusive, but I know that you still fucking Sheila over on 63rd. <laughs> <laughs> and Shadow, and Shadow, 63rd and Shadow. It's close enough, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I think 63rd is in Chatham, actually. <laughs> yeah, that, that's not sure. <laughs> <laughs> too much uh, so, chance man too much chance <laughs> that's what i'm saying so like that's different to me if if, okay. a, if a contract has been made essentially you know any monogamous polyamorous whatever if the contract's been made you're clearly violating the contract and then she's over here all heartbroken and shit like that i had a situation where uh some um some family was getting to know me and then I found out that same family was beating the dog shit out of his girlfriend. I didn't go, oh, that's my family. Like, you know, give him a chance. I told her, you should fucking leave. That's a yeah. different level of severity. I mean, I yes, I, yeah, absolutely. I would I would absolutely be like, first of all, let's let's do this. Let's talk at the hospital or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. like, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of survival mode at this point. Like, OK, right. You got to get the fuck out of here. But yeah. even if, beyond physical, even if it is like <laughs> mental and emotional, I'm saying if this is not to your betterment and you don't actually want to fight for it in a way that's going to be healthy, fucking leave. Yeah, I agree. It's less important to like, I think loyalty is less important than it's like just human decency. Yeah. At that yeah. point. That's but in the early stage, yeah. Uh, uh, go ahead, Adam, I bet. Uh, just to speak on like the, like the physical, uh, physical violence in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, I know this isn't the main subject, but I just got to say it. Like a lot of times people are, women particularly are in those relationships and they want to leave, but they, they feel like they can't because this guy, you know, they feel like this dude is going to kill me if I try to leave. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of times that is absolutely the most dangerous time for a woman in an abusive relationship, in, in abuse relationship to leave is to leave. And because we see it all the time, like, you know, some man loses his mind and kills his girlfriend or wife because she wanted to leave him. But she wanted to leave him because he was abusive. So it's like when if you guys do know women in abusive relationships, a lot of times they literally need like more than someone just telling them to leave like they might literally need you to come to the house like and you know no, get them there. Out, yeah. yeah because it's like you know because this guy ain't gonna do nothing if someone else is there most time because typically they're weak-minded anyway so exactly um mm -hmm. yeah, I, yeah i just want to say that because you know like, no absolutely they, we'll make oh, that's a good point yeah. yeah that's a good point man you actually like need something set up where they feel safe like so, not can't guarantee everything, but they need yeah. to feel like there's a plan set in place. There's Put resources or something. Place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because there's a lot of it's mental too, because there's plenty of women who you know who've gone back after leaving. You know, yeah. it's like, damn. Yeah. So you not know? I didn't mean to take it down that road. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I was I on that same note, I remember watching uh not remember recently I watched this uh show from Spain called Alpha Males, because I've been on my sitcom kick. And um, the whole thing is about like these four older dudes in late, late thirties, early forties, I think it is. Um, 
being overtaken by the 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 progressive women of today or something like that. It's 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 supposed to be a comedy. Uh but essentially <laughs> one of the <laughs> uh <laughs> not to give us a room later on if you guys want to uh check that out. They're in the clip notes. Uh <laughs> like I watched the whole thing and I'm not saying it was bad, but it wasn't great. Um I think I probably it probably does way better with a different kind of audience. Yeah, I feel that. Yeah. Um but I say I would say one of the characters, uh, he had been he'd been cheating on his girl for like two years with his uh with his business partner's wife. Hey. One, day, his, one day his one day his thing, one day his, <laughs> his girl approaches him like, hey, I want to have an open relationship. And all of a sudden he's like, no, why would we ever do that? I would never, I would never want to spend my yes. time with another person. He's crazy. It's like, fam, don't you know I got this relationship so I can fuck you over? I don't want this shit to be fair now. I don't want it to be want fair. Cake. He yeah, wants cake on. and he wants to be better. What's the saying? Uh, <laughs> he wants your cake and eat it too. Eat it too. Yeah. Which I think most people want to eat their own cake, but yeah, like that's saying no sense. Yeah, it is. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I bring all do. this up to say like that, like yeah. that, that kind of thing was when, when he told his friends about uh his girl wanting to be in an open relationship, he didn't tell he didn't tell all the like th- uh uh ways that he was being crazy about following her when she would go out on dates with other guys or <laughs> other kind of stuff. And they all went, you know you're being a hypocrite, right? But they didn't actually check him for real for real they just went you know that's stupid and then moved on oh i see what you're saying yeah, mm. that, yeah. i mean we know we see that, that level of uh double Cognitive standard of, yeah, yeah double standard. whatever the term the is. Time, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's like people want to like, like if i mean we see we see it culturally like like men like i mean we know there's nothing you can't prove it but men are more likely to cheat right i mean i think can we agree with that Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This I don't know what happened back, dog. My loyalty still lies with you, Adam. But I'm just I saying. Like I'll say this. I'll say I don't this. Think I, say, I don't. I can't say that. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll say this then. Uh, <laughs> different attack here. Uh, um, <laughs> I'm leave you on that island by yourself. Suck that, that, like, that. that battle shield. You play that battle shield. <laughs> but but no, like um. I really don't know. That you read the whole nah, thing. I, <laughs> I know what you mean, though. If but, we go, if, hey, if we're going based off of typical society standards and the way yeah. things are set up, and and like how let's if this dude has money and prestige and blah blah blah, and there's like yeah. more men in power in situations than women, and yeah, yeah. Like, but but it, honestly, that doesn't even matter. But we <clears throat> we know all the time though. We probably even know guys that we know are like have you know been not loyal. But I then, have, yes. like, I, yeah, <laughs> like if I they, yeah. but then if their significant other was, we know that the individual would be like, would blow up or be like, yes, I did, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. So yeah, I did. yeah. So Aaron is backing me on this. One, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now here's the thing. Uh, I probably shouldn't go on record saying this, and I know we ain't gonna get cut. But at one point, I was a very disloyal person, okay. and uh, as as loyalty is defined, and I gotta <laughs> yeah. tell you. I was praying I'd come home and catch my girl getting the back blown out. That was me so yeah. much like the breeze. Like, finally, thank you. <laughs> wait, wait, be, wait a minute. So you mean because of the guilt or? Uh, not even the guilt. I don't even really know that I felt any Want to guilt. even the playing field. <laughs> just, to, just to be like, okay, it's not just me. Okay, you I see what you're Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Then. I mean, that like, I, I respect that because... I, I honestly thought you meant it any other way. Like, I wish you would, like, meaning, like, I'm going to lose my mind. That's what no, I thought you were saying. Well, I respect that, honestly. I would like I said, I would It just I, seemed I, like uh, both of y'all were unhappy, and you were, you, it kind of would have, like, made the conversation easier. Yeah. If, I would, yeah. What I, I would have felt were were free, just, personally. <laughs> Go ahead, Marco. I want, like, the whole cheating subject is always real shaky. Like, it's not, it's no solid ground about it, because it's like, you just said, like, if both of y'all was unhappy, but what if both of y'all were happy, but doing what y'all was doing yeah, with, without being honest about it? How often does that happen without? I think just, I think that often, may happen a lot. 
I think it what may I'm happen saying a lot. is like I'm not saying they're deeply depressed or just their their relationship is horrible, but there's something that they're not. There's a conversation that they should have had and could have. Like it's not that this feeling just came out of nowhere. They could have had the conversation and just shied away from it for whatever yeah. reason. Well, well, and and the that's, other... this is in their individual minds. I'm saying, you know, the thing about it is, uh, I think that's why the really conversation... they didn't want monogamy. You know, that's what I'm saying. I, th- I think that's what. With, with with non-monogamy becoming more popularized, I think the the ease around it is a lot um it's a lot more like tangible for people. Understood. Yeah. Like, I think it's it, understood more. Because <clears throat> because for for our entire lives, with the exception of like maybe the last three years, <laughs> monogamy has had a chokehold on popular society. Yeah. Yeah, in a way that is. anything well, outside that's demonized. Yeah. <laughs> Not it's just the whole the, thing like I couldn't do it, but like it yeah. is. It's still taboo it's, though. It's, it's still very much the stronger of the two. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Which yeah. is fine. Yeah. And to go back to, to Marcus' point, like I think if there were two people that were, you know, stepping outside of the lines of the relationship, but mm-hmm. uh not even because they were unhappy, like you said, just because they wanted to. I think the reason why people don't talk about it is because they still think it's taboo and like thinking like my partner would never go for this. So I'm gonna just leave it to my, I'm gonna just keep it to myself and you know, kind of I think that's probably what most people yeah. do. And you ask about trust amongst the two, they yeah. talk about difficult things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's there's still something that's missing, is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. You know, for them to do that. And I know that for myself. I was insecure, I had a lack of trust. <laughs> And there's a couple other white women who had really big butts. So, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know? And uh, I mean, and I was that asshole who obviously from insecurity and shit, lack of trust, I blew up when I found out in a very shocking way that she was also doing the same thing. Like, oh, damn. So mm-hmm. you, the comment, there was many conversations oh, that should have been had that weren't. That weren't. <laughs> yeah, that weren't. Yeah. Just hearing that term bubble, a bubble bow to do is just crazy. Man. <laughs> but uh, there was just many conversations that weren't had and that we clearly wanted to have them mm-hmm. just for whatever reason didn't just from level of discomfort, be a taboo or whatever, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. I, I mean, so, so, we go go ahead, Marco. I was gonna say, like, I was gonna say maybe it's important to find out like if that's if that's um really what the person wants, or they just being like a uh like a result of the 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 time. You mm-hmm. know, bro, that's true. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what? I kind of feel like um And a lot of times you don't, the person might not even know, or you don't, you won't find out until they're challenged in some way. Like a lot of times in jobs, you think you can handle a job until you Mm. see a certain, you're confronted with a certain challenge and you realize, oh shit, this is not the job for me. It's the same in a relationship, I think. Yeah, that's very true. You learn the more relationships and honestly, the more failed relationships, um, you learn more about yourself. Yeah. Because you yeah, can man. you can honestly you can honestly stay in a relationship for a long time and um may not have any progress as far as uh personal areas or whatever, whatever, um as a person. Yeah. Um but it's really it's really not an age thing at all because I feel like personally I I started seriously dating later, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. Than most people, and you just learn. You learn more about yourself. It's true. And it's no, it's no, you know, it's no point of staying in something where you know that you're not compatible, and that's that's really uh, and it and it takes and it takes adversity, like Aaron said, to know that. So, I'll put. Yeah, I'll just leave it, leave it right there. <laughs> I can completely agree with that. That uh, uh, something I say to something I say to my students and uh, often is uh, growth happens more often in discomfort. For sure, I'll say it only happens. I mean, yeah. that's not true. What's... I would say it happens more with discomfort than it does. Right. You know, yeah. when you're just completely just because when things are going great, you're not looking to grow. You're just like, oh, everything's great. I'm just yeah. gonna coast. But then when you hit like. Mark said, when you hit adversity, not adversity, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's, that's, good. Yeah. that's it. Yes, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I pronounced it wrong. Um, but anyway, uh, when that happens, uh, you're forced to, fi- you got to figure it out. Like, how, how am I going to get through yeah. this? And then that's when you start learning, oh, I can use this resource or I can do this. Or I didn't know I was capable of doing this. Or this friend over here is really good at mm-hmm. this. You know, it's like, whatever it is. Yeah. And I, I agree with that. That's the, yeah, that's that big push, thing. I'm sorry, sorry, Josh, go ahead. Right. No, you were fine. Uh, I, I slightly push back to, to that only to say, like, I think, I think discomfort is something that you should frequent. But I don't think being discomfort, being uh, uncomfortable all the time is the only way to grow. Because I do think inside of uh, when you find a rhythm and you're starting to uh, you're starting to get better at whatever it is you're producing and whatnot, you're still fine tuning that skill. That doesn't necessarily mean that you're not growing anymore because you're you're fine tuning. I think I think there's there's a fine tune period, and then there's a point where you're just doing whatever that plateau is. And that's when you need to find yeah. discomfort again. I, I would okay. piggyback on Josh or yours just to say that uh, when you're fine tuning it, it's not that you found that groove and you're just not uncomfortable at all anymore. I just think there's more of a balance of like, this is a challenge, but I've my, my skill is beginning to catch up a little bit to meet this challenge. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? as I'm fine tuning. So it's not, I don't think you have to stay in discomfort, like you said, all the time. It's just, but if, if daily you can spend some time in it and then come back to me, that's as you're fine tuning that skill, you're yeah. spending some time in it, you know, but, um, <clears throat> I can agree yeah. with that. what's that cool? Just to sum it up. What's that? Uh, I probably mentioned it before. I like this quote. It says life starts at the end of your comfort zone. Not that it's definitely, uh, some true hmm. shit right there. I can agree with that. Cool. So let's put a pen in it there and we'll be right back. What up, y'all? So I had I had a real good morning today. You know, sometimes you get your morning started with the right music. And I was like, man, what do I feel like right now? And then I was like, you know what? Let's jump back to my childhood. And I put on a, a classic, a classic that, that ain't nobody listening to but me. I'm sure I got all the listens on Spotify. <laughs> Who be a master? The Pokemon soundtrack from the first season. <laughs> Fire. The first six tracks on there, amazing. Viridian City. <laughs> on, the the road, on the road. <laughs> and then and then it got to the Pokemon dance mix. Then <laughs> over here making my oatmeal and eggs. Jamming. <laughs> Feed your inner child. Okay, tomorrow when I'm driving over to this uh, long distance uh, job I got, I'm gonna be listening to the soundtracks from the first, uh, from the first and the second Power Rangers movie because mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. soundtracks are fucking amazing. Feed your inner child. Welcome back, welcome back to the show. We want to thank our sponsor, Powdered Purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> like I know, I know. It's powdered we, we, water. Uh, powdered water, exactly. Powdered water. You started. <laughs> Paper straw. Take a line of powder purgatory and get hydrated for at least the next six hours. pH balance. It is alkaline, right? For all my Dr. Sebi fans. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might have know, created some. Aren't you sick of those cans? Aren't you sick of those half drunk bottles? Get powdered purgatory hydrated today. And so uh what? <laughs> and so um fellas, uh Adam threw this in here. 50 <laughs> Cent doesn't think Jay-Z's impact is bigger than Eminem's. G unit. <laughs> yeah. I just want to start off by saying 50 Cent is not alone. <laughs> no, no, no. No, just... Man, that's it's such a it's such a good discussion because I feel like both of them obviously have had illustrious careers. That's that's a given. Um but it's like if you look at it from like okay, so if you look at Eminem, obviously he sold the most records. Of any rapper in history, um, 
But then we look at Jay Z. I think I think Jay Z has the most Grammys. Yeah, uh, uh, just under the Beatles. Wait. Yeah, uh, he has so the word that uses Grammys are more most... impactful. Hmm. What's yeah. The, impact. What's the word that is more impactful? Okay. Yeah, it's more impactful. So like, I think I I think it's subjective. Like yeah, impact on what and who. Yep. Yeah, that's true. Because like, if you that's say true, okay, yeah. who had the biggest the impact culture, I guess. on yeah, because like you can say culture, but then you can say. <laughs> Just hip hop, like just, Russell. just, yeah, right, just hip hop. Um, and I mean, there's so many ways to address this. Like, I think Eminem had yeah. a gigan- has a gigantic, he, gigantic uh, impact nice. in a sense where he, I'm not saying he made it mainstream because he didn't, but it, no. it, he made it more palatable to white folks. Though I do believe that, which in turn put more eyes on it. Mm-hmm. You could say that's. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing or not, but, and then you have Jay-Z, which I, I think, I think, I think I believe Jay-Z is the best rapper. I, I just believe that, but. Um, Actually think, quite surprised you put, you didn't say Nas. But I'm yeah, sure I mean, you have your I, I go back and forth between them like every yeah. two years. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, but I think Jay-Z's impact is different. And this is why I say that. I think, Jay Z changed the way we think about rap as far as age. Mm-hmm. And I think that's super that's important. Yeah. Um, because I I was one of those people like you know when Jay Z was getting into like his upper thirties like is he gonna stop anytime soon like being ignorant and like but I'm yeah. like but then I like you know as I started getting older I'm like well why would he stop he could still do it mm-hmm. and then as he kept going he kept seeing all these other people kept going like. Nas and Bryce Five Nine, all these other people that are having like the best part of their career in their forties. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah. to me, some of the best rappers out there are like mid thirties and up. Like all these twenty year olds, I, they they don't do it for me. So I mean, like, I think the most skilled people are older, and I think Jay Z is one of the people that kind of led the charge on like being over forty. Because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people, like, I'm gonna hang it up, you know. But he's kept like kept going and kept making you know, okay music for the most part, like, um, so I think that's, that's pretty huge, uh, in, in hip hop. Uh, mm-hmm. like, like, like we were saying before, he does have the most Grammys. I know he has the most Grammys as a rapper. That's not even close. As but, a rapper. Yeah, absolutely. But as far as just period, he's still up there. I think, I think he said he's, the Beatles, right? I think he said, I think it's second most. I think he has like 14, 15 and the Beatles have like nine, 18, 19. Oh, like I think okay. that's for the number one albums, the consecutive number one. Oh, okay. Maybe I'm making okay. 14 and the bad. Beatles have 19. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so, that's still, yeah. but for albums, not for Grammys is what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know. The Grammys. Yeah, I, got yeah. I got I got you. I got you. I got you. <laughs> um, if I could jump in. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a factor to what uh, a factor about hip hop that isn't talked about enough, and that is that it is less than sixty years old. Yeah, it as a musical genre is less than sixty years old, and I bring that up because people talk about aging out of it, and I go, but it itself is really young. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> and so, to say some to say like these people need to stop rapping once they hit their thirties has never really made sense to me. Only thing that makes sense to me is they need to change what they rap about. Yeah, and they typically do. Yeah. I, they I, typically do. Yeah, but I think the reason is, um, well, I think the reason most people felt like that, and myself included, maybe at some point, is because you would see that decline. Like you would see uh, less. Uh, like less less furious type <laughs> styles, mm-hmm. <Yeah>. <laughs> but and, and, <laughs> and less rhymes. You know, I, I love just that furious styles like you that's a the rapper. Ain't that, ain't, that, <laughs> yeah. ain't that Lawrence Blah. Fishburne's character? And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> that, uh, uh, Mr. Society? No, uh, no, but, not Minister uh, Boys in uh, the Hood. Boys in the Hood, right? <laughs> but um, but I, I say all that to say. I think I think Jay's impact on hip hop is larger. I think Eminem's impact on the world is larger. Dang. I agree. Because yeah, I agree. To Adam's point of it making it well, more palatable to white people, huh? 
What do you say? I was just I was just thinking like, well, I don't know because <laughs> Jay Z actually, and I know Eminem has done good business, but Jay Z has really excelled in businesses, which true, which would be world a little bit. You know, I, you you talking about? Um, I I'll, I'll even rephrase my statement. Mm-hmm. I I think <laughs> Jay. I think Jay would have still had a lot of uh, business and commercial success. He got more success because of Eminem's impact. Only because prior prior to rappers like Eminem, and especially Eminem in particular, making rap pop, but not making it the pop sound, but giving it giving it the availability to get pop dollars. Yeah, like top 40. Like, <laughs> like top, yeah. hip-hop was not allowed to do that shit in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. And I think yeah. no one's no one was better than making rap songs that you can hear on the radio, but you, you can listen to the lyrics. Like, he's still talking about something. He's not just, you know, aimlessly out it's, here rapping. Like, and I think Jay-Z is the best lounge. lounge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so that's what I'm saying. It's like, because because... Eminem opened that door for them to go back and not uh, not only embrace other white rappers, but go back to get rappers that were already doing it well that could evolve with the times because that's like why a Rakim didn't get a lot of commercial success because he he just wasn't there for the wave anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so my my argument would be, I think overall Jay-Z has a bigger impact. But JD JD doesn't get that impact if Eminem didn't open up that side of the commercial world for it to get to hip hop. And I don't know. I I, I think part of that is because of Eminem's skill. Absolutely. And it's also because Eminem is white. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. If he was white, he's still on the shelf. Because if Eminem, if Eminem was fucking Puerto Rican, (laughs) (laughs) what like his skin would have just been chalked up to another Puerto Rican? Like it, it wouldn't have happened. (laughs) No, I think Josh is right, man. It's right. You like you need both of those. Um, One thing I'll say, I guess I'm grateful for is that, like, um, I think even with his popularity and how he brought it to the world per se. Um, I, I think part of what helped is that he actually did care about the culture. He actually did care about hip hop and actually cared about True. being good and like pushed. So hopefully he pushed that. He pushed a level of sincerity of like, oh, to even a bigger audience, like, like the white audience, that it is okay to also care. Uh, you, you know what I'm saying? Actually yeah. you know, appreciate and respect the culture that I'm a visitor in. I yeah. hope that was a. I hope, I hope that came with the mess, the overall message as well, because um, mm-hmm. I do feel like that was the truth for him. Versus, like you could just see the respect, and I think that played a part as well. Man, at least I hope so. I can yeah. get that. You know? I always appreciated him saying and doing that because people who didn't know him or would just only pay attention pay attention to the service stuff of him being in the <clears throat> they're going to acknowledge and kind of hold it against him that he's a white rapper. Oh, yeah. And I also don't hold it against rappers that were like, I can't really get into Eminem because he just talks about drugs and killing his mom. Like, that's yes. not really the life I live. But honestly, I, I, think, yeah. I think people was, people were just mad because he was that good in white. Because there's so. always been white rappers it. in hip hop. Yeah, yeah, but, but yeah. I don't think they took the Beatles as serious as Eminem. I don't think they took like MC Search and them guys. They didn't take them that that serious, like a top top tier, you know, rapper. And I don't think that may. I don't. I'm not sure. I can't say for a fact that M is the only one who came up the way he did. If you want to call it like a le- quote unquote like 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 a legit route, I guess you know what I'm saying, like a more mean, respected route, route, like like. Uh, I think certain like gets more respect from coming up with the un- like from the underground and like battles and stuff like being challenged consistently to get respect in whatever area you're in. Um, I don't know how often that happens now. I, I get know? that. 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It I don't think that happen, came no. along with it. came along with this story. <laughs> is what I'm saying. I mean, you know, I like in regards to white rappers, separate. I guess. But yeah, I think they keep them separate now. Uh, I don't think I don't yeah, think battle yeah. rappers are even going for. Oh, but back then, yeah. though, is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's like, what I'm saying. Back yeah. then, it was different. Um, yeah. but even then, I I I don't know. I think it's. I think it's such a uh, it's such a layered conversation because there's people who respect him for his talent but don't like his content, and yeah. I, I think that I think that it's even something to say that he his content was not necessarily palatable to the masses. He was extremely homophobic. He was extremely violent. He, he, was, he yeah. talked, but I think talk- now, he, but now even that's kind of. <laughs> kind of light. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Every, every, every song that I hear on the radio is a death chant. <laughs> True. I mean, he said, he so said it like, best. He said, we, you we, think I'm the first rapper this... to smack a, smack a bitch and say, come on. Of course, he, come on. No. <laughs> he was. He it was, was because I, he was so popular. Yeah. He was so but popular. But now we, we yeah. exposed to so much. It's like, we, we heard mm. it all. Right. So now it's like, okay, Eminem, Eminem opened the door for that. Um, to a, a, to a larger more, audience, it's, it's yeah. A, once again, yeah. Like people, I, yeah. Were, people were but, talking but, reckless I mean, I guess... in different ways. Let's, like people were talking reckless in hip hop, just in different ways, and it wasn't sure. so in your face. And they it weren't was, talking about I... their mother, their mother. They weren't, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Which we is also saying... not is not yeah. the majority of his music. So like that, that whole argument, man, that people say like. They clearly haven't listened to very much. I mean, even yeah. something one of That's his greatest storytelling materials, like Stan, was also on that same album as fucking Kim. The crazy yeah. thing, Eminem's like, first album. But they only pick on that me, shit over bro. and over and over. You know. But here's the thing. It's crazy. We knew because we were re-listening to the song that Kim was a like wor- work of art. My mom, when she not Kim, uh, that Stan was a work of art. Kim was just funny. Uh, yeah, I think it is too. Yeah. Uh, you think Kim, Kim was, was in his own uh, way. It's therapy. It's in his therapy, own way. Though. Good God, I, I it's didn't like so that he needed therapy. But uh, yeah. <laughs> you can't show <laughs> yeah. you can't show um, support for that song now, man. That's uh, but lose I, your business. Stan, I remember my mom listening to Stan, and she wasn't really listening. Mm-hmm. She would just hear the the perimeter of it. The energy of it. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. but when when she realized in that third verse that the dude was driving off a bridge, mm-hmm. she didn't care about the rest of the song or right. what the song was trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she, that, she was just like, I can't believe they playing this on the radio and that this is so horrible. Why would they play this kind of stuff on the radio? I'm like, my, you're not listening to the whole song. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I like, no, real quick, like, no, yeah. it's all good. It's all good. The, 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 the fact of the matter is like people, artists, whatever, are allowed to make whatever they want to make. That's right. that's one of the beautiful things about living in this country that, that we're not completely censored. I mean, for the most part. Um yeah. less it's about bodies. Bodies get censored like a motherfucker. But, <laughs> but um <laughs> and speaking of censorship, we probably got to bleep out that uh that uh I meant to say that. I meant to yeah. say that, yeah. That was a that was a that was a quote from us from a sign from, from a um a lyric from Eminem. Sure. That I was Still using to to right. provide. I'm letting the audience know that I was using to. <laughs> I disagree to, with that. Honestly. I don't think we should provide context. Context. to a point. Huh? I don't I'm think trying we should to provide context to how he, he was not the only one who was talking reckless or crazy or talking in a way that was in your face or can, could could be considered. Oh no, I'm not. Bad. I don't think the context is bad. You know, you're saying your lyric and all that kind of stuff, but it would be the equivalent of, you know, uh, if if I don't know Tom Arnold. I'm just thinking of a random white person <laughs> said the N word. Yeah, sorry, saying N word. Like it's this is the same thing. And so I want to say that, but for YouTube reasons. Okay, I don't think we should. I will bleep it. I don't believe you should. I just want to go on the record. <laughs> I will do it. Uh, that's it. The times we live in, man. <laughs> but um, Better. I forgot the point I was I was making about my bad. So right, about sen- yeah. about censorship. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I remember now. So, I I would say Eminem. I'm still dis- like <laughs> can't think of it. Uh, I don't know. I'll come back to it. <laughs> All good. Um. Okay, final thoughts on this. Yeah, yeah. My final, (laughs) I mean, 
I'm just, I am a little bit sick of that argument that he only raps about this and that. And that's one of the things that come up, whether you're talking about his current music or the music that people claim they love the most and they wish he would go back to. It's like, you can never be good enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, which they have their reasons. That's cool. Um, I guess it, it's clear that he has... He doesn't have the same level of rage. He's not poor anymore. He's not <laughs> going through those same things that he was going through then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But um, I just respect that the passion is still there. And that's one of the same things I respect about Jay-Z, mm -hmm. that the passion is still there, even at this age. And they're able to perform, even though they might speak about different things still, they're able to perform at such a high level at this age. So that level of lo like longevity, um, is much appreciated now since this is about either or um i'm probably gonna have to reiterate what josh said i mean overall hip-hop i'm giving it to jay but just in a worldly sense for several factors one main one being that he's white and happen to be skillful and respect the craft giving it to him but just hip-hop as a uh, guess hip hop culture and how it keep it in mind how it originated it's hard not to give that to jay even for business practices like encouraging others to level up their game in whatever in whatever mm -hmm. way it still helps the culture yeah you know you could and say Eminem with Shay Shay 4 5 my bad let me go ahead and say that <laughs> hooking up sway who was a big sway helped a lot of people and he hooked up sway and just all these just different connections and 50 cent royce and all of that but still giving it to jay yeah. Here in a moment, I was always wondering if Sway show on uh, Shade Four Five had anything to do with him. I never knew. Yeah, M owns Shade Four Five. Yeah. Word. Okay. That's a good point. I didn't even think. I didn't even. I mean, I knew that, but I didn't. Put I didn't even think about that in this conversation. <laughs> uh, That's why when Sway when Sway interviewed Eminem, it was like a vanilla. Uh, <laughs> Vanilla questions, <laughs> layups, softballs. <laughs> um, I, I, I do want to go back like quite like quite a bit though, because like because mm -hmm. I remember Aaron, you said something like you respect the fact that uh, Eminem respects the history of hip hop, and we all know that in this conversation, there's a lot of people who don't even know they think it's just some white guy doing black music. And, and like, yeah, that's true. But there is also deeper than that. He he does actually know the history, respect the history. And like he he knows the pioneers. He is a pioneer. You you could say. Um, could you say uh, that? And, yeah, and that's why a lot of yeah, goats. Uh, I, I feel so. like that's why a lot of goats like Rock Him and them steadily reiterate the fact that they respect him. Uh, yeah. I think it's not just mm -hmm. the skill. It's because this is a white dude who's not just doesn't seem to be just eating off of this fucking craft without caring to give back in some way. Yeah. I mean, M, M named some motherfuckers who I think a lot of black people would have never heard of or listened to. Oh, I'm I sure. mean, from, from, from lyrics, later, back in the day. Lyrics, that L lyrics. I mean, yeah, yeah. Like, what was it? Uh, Art of, the Art of Rap or one of those uh, uh, hip hop evolution. M was rapping whole Tretch verses. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, he's a big, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. he went he went on a tour called the, the, well, it was going to call it the Rap Shirt Tour, but he called it the Rap Shirt instead. And mm -hmm. going to 80,000, he's selling out 80,000 people at seat arenas wearing Molly Mall and shit. You know what I'm saying? Shirts and stuff. So people can see my white fans who will never give a fuck about Molly Mall, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> can get a feel for like what inspired him as a white rapper to even pursue that, you know? But the, um, let me even say, levels to it. I, it always kind of trips me up. Um, humbly said that there are more Koreans that know about breakdancing than black folks and then there's more <laughs> white folks that know more about underground rappers from early or, or early underground I know uh, I, got, I got a little Asian homie who knows more about immortal technique than I ever will. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> yeah. And like to add on to that is like most of the dopest graffiti artists, I will say, I won't say most of them, but a lot of them aren't black. Like, yeah, yeah. Whenever I see graffiti artists doing a thing on YouTube, at least uh, most of them aren't black. 
And that's so not, that's, like that's every, everybody has yeah. taken yeah. the yeah 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 like today everybody um I I won't even use the word taken is like we I'll like is is a shared thing you know yeah uh that's I, just what it is now that's a that, good thing I mean I, I I can always appreciate uh it's that dual thing where I appreciate that the um uh, as it's, as I think it's called the the pillars of hip hop uh break dancing uh MCing DJing and uh is fashion uh, a part uh, of that? Gra- fashion, at what point did fashion uh, become a I, part of that? I, I think eventually it did because yeah. it became a part of like the cultural aspect mm-hmm. of it. We were talking yeah. about the art, the like the the art uh, forms that made the culture of hip hop. I want to say it, it was MCing, DJing, break dancing, and uh, graffiti. Graffiti, yep. Uh, yeah. Eventually, fashion came in. Eventually, beatboxing came in. All that kind of stuff and like got <laughs> formalized. But it is rare that that. Let me say rare. From what I've seen anyway, the overwhelming majority of people still practicing all the pillars are not black. Yeah. But the issue I the only the main issue that I'll have usually inside of those conversations is people will not acknowledge its foundations, even though they're practicing them, to say this is a world art now and not this is born from a black art. Yeah, that's that is the, a good that's point. The beef I have. Here's, here's I my one that. push. Here's my one pushback. I'll say on that. I feel like when you get into a lot of fields, maybe I can't say all fields because you need to know history and care about history. I don't know that a lot of people care about the history of a lot of things they're getting into. Of course, sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's it's, just another one. I, that, that's my only. Yeah, you're you're right about that. You're that. Completely yeah. right about. It. However, it just when. Okay, when a certain group of people have been shitted on for so long, yeah, yeah. it's like this is all we have, like this is our thing, and that we can't even like have ownership. We, you know, we can't even be credited for that. It's like, dang, like you know, like we, you, yeah. we, we, we yeah. I'm saying we like I've done anything, but uh, it's still your history. Yeah, like <laughs> black people, let's put it that way, have given so much art, and not just art, like. Everything. engineering and like yeah. whatever but so much yeah. to the world not just the united states so much to the world yet we see nothing from it like there's there's no like <laughs> I mean, not even a pat on the back it's just like oh we're gonna take this make a bunch of money off of it and that's what we're gonna do and it, it, it's just that it's like dang okay. <laughs> like, a prime example I, I, used, I like to always give people is First of all, if you don't know who uh, uh, DJ Cool Herc is, then that's already a history thing in itself. But Cool Herc yeah. made hip hop, like by singling out the break and all that kind of stuff. So Herc is not wealthy. And that's a problem in my world yeah. because he's still alive. That's what, when I talk about like how hip hop is young, the dude that made it is still alive <laughs> yeah and broke <laughs> like, like he's that, not even old yeah. like he's kind of old that's he's what, like, um, like in the 60s maybe he's, maybe like, early 70s? he's like in his early 70s i think yeah, yeah. a few yeah, yeah, remember yeah. when uh of course. remember when dj academics was talking about like the the founding like hip-hop people being mm-hmm. dusty i think that's what he was talking about but um they may have misinterpreted <laughs> yeah i, I don't I know, know. Oh, I don't. I, I didn't hear this. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the basically, conversation. Basically, he was. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Ba- okay. Basically, um, like a a few months ago, um, he had made a statement like, uh, those old, like you know how he he may talk yeah. like he was like those mm-hmm. old hip hop got hip hop guys are dusty, and <laughs> he was he was having that conversation, but I think that he was trying to say what we saying like. Them guys who made it, who created it, aren't aren't seeing the, you know, the fruits of their labor. You know, that's basically, I think that's what he was yeah. saying. But they had, they had, horrible they way had, like, yeah, I, I took Dusty as like an insult. Yeah, man. yeah, <laughs> yeah, me yeah. It too. was, it was like, like a half like, insult, like irrelevant half, or something. Like, I thought he was saying irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, which is irrelevant. Let me yeah. be clear. So, so you hit me with that rewind, man. <laughs> irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> I think he was just saying that they don't, they not, they don't have money, and they don't, they almost don't even have the recognition 
either. I definitely don't at all. work next year. Yeah. But I guarantee you, if, like, I remember, I remember when I was working at Bozak at, out in Maryville, mm-hmm. I was talking to a guy. He was like, maybe he was 21. He was 21. Uh, and then he asked me, uh, who my favorite rapper was. And oddly enough, at the time I did say Nas, which is funny, but, um, uh, <laughs> I was like, it's Nas. And he's like, you mean, uh, Lil Nas X? I'm like, nah, it's just Nas. Like, I've never heard of your drones. <laughs> and he's like, he, he, he had never heard of Nas. Yeah. And, and I get it. He's 21, but he's also someone that consumes hip hop on a daily basis. That's his favorite genre. So I'm mm-hmm. like, you listen to hip hop every day and you never heard of Nas. I'm not saying you've never heard an album of his, never heard the name Nas before. And that blew my mind. Like, how, how is hip hop your favorite genre? And you've never heard of Nas. I'm not, like I said, you don't have to, you don't have to quote a lyric. You don't have to do any of that. But to say that you've never heard the man's name before is, it blew my mind. Like, and that's. Well, a lot of people out here <laughs> posing about yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, this is my favorite show. And probably just like seeing one episode. Like, you never. <laughs> yeah, can't really. Uh, if you can't hold a, <laughs> a long conversation about it. It's not your favorite anything. Yeah. yeah. There's like a common uh, <laughs> meme out there of like. Uh, a girl running, some guy chasing her. And it's like, uh, but it's like when you wear like a, a band t-shirt and a guy asks you to name three songs, something like that. <laughs> but it's like, and it's like, I get it. But at the same time, I'm not going to wear a band t-shirt and I can, and I don't like them. Like that's, that's weird to me though. Like, I think yeah. both of those things are weird. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought you, about I, that I, too. I yeah, do man. think you're an asshole if you're like, uh, do you know three Grateful Dead songs? I'm like, I agree. Yeah, I would you never ask anybody that personally. Stop fucking testing me. Yeah. I just, yeah, in the back I just, of my mind, I'm I just that, always though. think that. <laughs> yeah. I be thinking that like, do they, I mean, do they I'm not going to act like I don't. When I, <laughs> yeah. when I see some, you know, white kid in suburbia wearing a Wu-Tang shirt, I'm going, <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah. do, do you ne- I, I do want to go like name five members yeah <laughs> nah excuse me <laughs> name all nine name all nine sure. <laughs> I want to hear all nine <laughs> but I'm not yeah. going to do that just because I'm, I'm not that kind of asshole <laughs> yeah man but yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't like I don't those tests either but. I, uh, I, I, I want and I uh, um, y'all say your last thoughts I, I got a last thought I want to mm. say but I want to make sure I wrap it up after that I was just gonna say that. I was just gonna say that uh, I really wanted to buy a Metallica shirt because they look dope. But for that <laughs> very do. reason, <laughs> they look dope. And I'm like, bro, somebody hit me with that quiz. I'm failing. So I'm saying, saying, man. <laughs> it's funny. I, I bet pe- I bet some people think Metallica is like a brand now. <laughs> like, Literally, I every, got a Metallica. <laughs> one of one of like five to seven people has a fucking Metallica shirt, man. man. I mean, uh, what was it? I didn't uh, I didn't know Misfits was a band for a minute. Um, and uh, I, li- I really enjoyed the English show. The show yeah. So I remember yeah. mm-hmm. seeing the kid, I was like, oh, that's a great show. And he was like, it's a band. And I was like, it's a show too. So shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> fun, fun fact, that show is single-handedly the reason I got into uh, the Black Keys. Because <laughs> mm. mm. th- there was one scene where they, they were playing uh, a song, Thick Freakness was a song actually. Um, mm. I'm not sure if you know what it is. But anyway, uh, like, hey, what is that? And I shazammed it. Like, then ever since then, I've been... Been a Black huh. Keys fan. Yep. Oh, I need to check yeah. out this show. Actually, it's yeah. great. I knew. Okay. Yeah, I'd heard of it. First, the first it. season is great. Yeah. It. Okay. <laughs> I take some turns after that. Then yeah. I'm, What's I'm, it always on? Agree with. Huh? Uh, streaming uh, it's on Hulu. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if it still is, but I don't know if it still is. Yeah, yeah, that, it I, came out like what about a decade ago at this point. Okay. <laughs> like, I'm it, sure I can like, on it then. Like eight years. Six. Oh yeah. seven? No, we, 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 we were out of high school, so it had to be like uh, like I think it was like 2010. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Got you. Damn. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Over the, uh, about over a decade ago. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, my final thoughts on this is I really want these inter- intergenerational conversations with hip hop to kind of stop. I don't know why there has to be all these comparisons of what is and isn't. I think I think the umbrella of hip hop is wide. Um, and we've had this conversation before, and I'm gonna argue it always that there should be fucking subgenres. We wouldn't have a lot of this controversy if it was. But everybody wants to validate yeah. this thing that's so fucking young that it still has room to be defined. Yeah. And I, I, uh, but yeah. So uh, <laughs> as far as the the Jay Z M conversation, yeah, I. I think Jay overall has more influence. I think, but I don't think he gets there without Eminem. 
That's yeah. fair. I, I'm a second. I'm a, I'm a second Josh's sentiments, and also just say, can we just appreciate the fact that, that both of their longevity, being being in being in their mid to late forties, and still having that, still have an impact and that level of skill, shows they actually care. It's dope. No, nah, because current Eminem is trash. Uh, <laughs> 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 I take that on the chin. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and uh, bleep that out, Adam. Right. Yeah, that's, bleep that's that out be, if you want. I think that's got to be inflammatory. We appreciate y'all. We love you. Thank you for joining us for another episode of the Family Eyes Podcast. <laughs> You know where to write us, Informally Honest Podcast at gmail.com. Informally Honest on everything except Twitter. That's Informally underscore HP. And, um, you know, write us. Let us know how you're feeling. Um, our first subject from the Abbott Elementary thing was an uh, audience submission. Uh, thank you to that person for writing in. And we appreciate y'all. We, we appreciate y'all. We love you. And no matter who you talk to, no matter who you engage with or who you connect with, we empower, encourage, and implore you to always be forthright, vulnerable, and say it with me, audience, while you're in your car. Yell that shit. Break a window. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Peace. Peace, world. Blessings. Can't look in the Goodbye. eyes Thanks for listening. Of Without shedding a tear for my brother I really want to try for my brother Cause I truly do feel for my brother